Hi guys, in this video I'm going to just talk about some highlights that I've mentioned in um, my text notes. Namely, we're going to talk about one way or one factor ANOVA. Okay, it goes by both of those names or sometimes single factor ANOVA. Okay, so uh, listen to what I say as well as what I write. I don't always write everything I say here. You can always rewind and recap what we've what I've uh, talked about uh, and watch this at your own pace. Okay, so some essential items. So basically, uh, as you re recall from the notes or from reading about one way ANOVA, there's some numerical variable that we want to compare across a group of populations. Okay, how, do, how we distinguish the populations is with a factor. Okay, so here's some key terms that we've defined. Okay, the levels of the factor distinguish the populations. Okay, when we get to an example, you'll actually see this in action. So if my factor is gender, gender takes two levels, male, female. So I would be separating my population into these two giant groups, males in one population, females in another population. Okay, great. So there my factor would be gender. In that case, uh, our factor only has two levels. So maybe I'll, let me use another example that has multiple levels, uh, more than two. So let me use uh, political affiliation. So here, unfortunately, it seems like we're limited to discussing Democrat, Republican, or Independent. At least we have Independent as a third. Okay, So there's three levels for political affiliation. Now what is it about political affiliation that I'm interested in studying? Well, there, there has to be some numerical to, to qualify as a one-way ANOVA, there has to be some numerical variable, one numerical variable, that we're interested in studying across these populations. So let's think of something. So maybe income. So basically, so see, the way we've kind of backed into this made-up example is we're, we want to see whether there's a difference among political affiliations with respect to income. So Hypothetically, yeah, maybe Republicans have higher average income than Democrats, or Independents have higher income than Republicans, or whatever it might be. We want to ask that question. Okay, so this is the basic framework. Okay, for a one-way ANOVA, and why do I say that? Because a one-way ANOVA can answer that question. So here's some of those words. So we have a variable. Okay. Okay, so we, what we'll do basically, roughly, is we'll collect data. So here's our political affiliations. We'll go to Democrats. We'll randomly sample a bunch of Democrats and find out their incomes. So we'll write that down here. Okay, we'll go to a bunch of Republicans independently, and we'll ask what their incomes are. Boom, 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 boom. We'll collect a random sample of Republican incomes. Then we'll go to independents independently, <laughs> no pun intended again. Independents will independently will randomly select a bunch of them and find out what their incomes are, and we'll record that. This will be our data. This will serve as our data to uh, kind of proceed to answer that query we had. Um, is there a difference among um, different political affiliations with respect to income? So we have some data to start with. Okay, so we have a, each of these is a group or a population, and we sit, we took a random sample from each of the populations. Obviously, we can't get all the incomes from all the Republicans or all the incomes from all the Democrats, or all the incomes from all the independents. So from each of these groups, we took a random sample, right? which is the basic idea behind a lot of statistical procedures. We made sure that the samples were independent of each other. In other words, that these guys were not brothers and sisters across the groups, or family members, or, and so forth. Okay. All right, so that's the, that's the basic framework of, uh, of what uh, 
one way ANOVA uh, study could look like. Okay. Now, if we limit the number of observations we take, if we so, sorry, if we take the same number of observations in each of the groups, in this case, there's three groups, right? So if we say, oh, if I'm going to take 20 people, 20 Democrats, if I'm going to sample 20 Democrats, I'm going to sample 20 Republicans and 20 independents. If I, if I make this kind of rule for myself, then this is called a balanced design. So this experiment is being done in a balanced way. Okay, and that makes things a lot easier down the line with the formulas and the calculations and so forth. So we'll try to use balanced designs. Okay? Unbalanced would mean that, let's say, one of these groups had 30. All of a sudden, now these are not balanced. Okay? All right. Now, what I want to discuss here is now the next step would be to kind of culminate everything that we've talked about, basically our goal here, into a hypothesis statement because that's going to be the the uh, that's what's going to drive us and make it clear that we're doing a one-way ANOVA. So our null hypothesis, remember, what we initially assumed to be true is that all the groups or all the populations have the same mean. In this example, there's three populations, so the mean income from of Democrats, so subscript D, is equal to the mean income of Republicans is equal to the mean income of independents. The null hypothesis for a one factor or one way ANOVA is always that the means of the groups are equal. Okay, so in this case, since there's three, you'll see three here. If there was four, you'd see four here, and so on. Okay. The alternative can be expressed in many ways, and one way to put it very succinctly is ALOI, and that stands for at least one inequality. So that's saying at least one of these means is different than the others. It could also mean that they're all different than each other. It could mean that one particular one is different than the other two, and the other two are the same, and you could see that there's many ways that that can happen. ALOI, at least one inequality, handles all of that together. It's basically saying all of that in one shot. Okay? And of course, every hypothesis test is going to have a level of significance, so that will be given to you in an example. Now, before we, we end this part and move into talking about formulas and then proceed to an example, let me say there are a few assumptions that we need to be aware of, I want you to be aware of. And first, let me just say them. One, normality of populations. So since we're talking about income here, let's talk about this example. We're saying that all, four, all three of these populations have a normal distribution when it comes to income. Okay, remember the normal distribution, the nice bell-shaped curve that's symmetrical and so forth. Okay, so that's assumption one. Normality, let me just abbreviate like this. That's the normality assumption. Number two, all samples taken from all the populations are independent and randomly selected. Okay, so a sample you take from the Democrats an observation you select from the Democrats has nothing to do with an observation from the Republicans and so forth. So they're not meaningfully connected. And finally, our third assumption that you should be aware of is equality or homogeneity. Geneity of population variances. So that's saying that sigma squared from the Democrats is equal to sigma squared. From the Republicans, this is a subscript R, is equal to sigma squared from the independents. Okay, so that's, an, that's what the third assumption is saying. All right, of course, not all examples are going to be about Democrats, Republicans, and independents, and not all, exa all examples are going to have three levels like this one did. Some will have four, some will have five. Our data will just get bigger. Our null hypothesis will just 
get a little bit more um, longer. So we'll get something maybe mu4 if there's four levels, mu5 if there's five levels of groups, and so forth. Okay, so ANOVA can handle anything from two to, th to anything you can imagine. Okay, but typically you'll see examples with three, four, five, maybe six um, groups that you're comparing on a particular variable. And when you're com when we say we're comparing them, we're comparing their means. Okay, so mu's. You see a bunch of mu's in the HO, right? This mu, remember, is the population mean. And the population mean is something typically we don't know, but it exists out there somewhere. It's just we can't access it. If you did the review or if you took an intro stats course, you remember this was a key point. So what we do is we estimate it with x bar, which is a sample mean. This can be calculated using uh, from data that we've collected but it's always an estimate. So hence, look at these squiggly equal signs of mu. Okay? So you've learned this in this intro stats course. Now we're just extending this to, we're talking about the mean income of Democrats. So I put a little subscript there. And so I take the mean in, sample mean income of the uh, from the sample of Democrats that I selected, and I use that as an estimate but I don't confuse this with this. I know that this guy is an estimate of this guy and that it's not equal to this guy. Okay, and that goes for the rest of these. Okay, the hypothesis statement is always about population means in a one way ANOVA. So don't ever put X bars in the HO statement. Don't do this. All right, so watch part two of this tutorial. You'll start building up some of the more technical aspects, and then you get to a point where you can do the example together with me through the uh, by hand, and then finally doing it uh, with software. Okay.